church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for that beautiful ministry and song, you ladies. Amen. I don't know if you all think about it, but um, music is emotion's voice. That's what it is. It's beautiful. The Lord 
Lord Jesus has shown us the way. In verse, I would like you to turn your Bibles to Psalm. Psalm 7. If you would. Psalm 7. And uh, we'll be looking at verse 8. Y'all get there to say amen? amen. Okay, beginning in verse 8, it says, The Lord shall judge the people. Right? Yes. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous of the righteous God trieth the heart and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. You know this word reigns, if you look it up, is H3629. And how it's pronounced is Kilia. Kilia. That's the reigns. I believe the reigns that the Bible is speaking here is the seat of of the emotion in the brain. Okay? It is... Let me show you something. It's a beautiful picture that I sent Ricky this morning. He, um... <laughs> I don't know how he managed to get it blown up this big, but he's an amazing guy. Um, this says, if we ever expect to go forward, that horse at the rear must be unhitched. Victorious living is that way. Full obedience horse is pulled that way. But do you notice there's another horse tied to the wagon? And that horse is evil desires. And it says you cannot serve God and mammon. No man can go in two directions at once. We must obey God or follow the way of death. I love pictures. This brothers and sisters is a beautiful picture. We have to unhook that horse in the back. The definition for Kilia, the mind, as the interior self, the seat of authority. Decisions, brothers and sisters, must be made. Sins or Christ. As my mother would once say, if there's no two if ands or buts about it, that's the way it is. If we turn to Proverbs, a little bit to the right, we'll be going back to Psalms, and I want to go to Proverbs 23, 7. You guys, mostly you probably know this by heart. For as he thinketh in his heart, what is it? So, so is he. Eat and drink, saith thee, he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So, but the first part of that says, for he, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you believe that? Yes. As a man, so thinketh in his heart, so is he. So these pictures that we put into our mind, okay, into our conscious mind, sink down into our subconscious mind. Correct? Yes. And that is who we become. So what we behold, we become. Amen. If it be Christ, then it's Christ. If it be sin, evil desires, then that's the way it goes. We make the decision to serve God or to serve evil, evil desires. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 26. 26. And two. Go there. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins.
in my heart. Remember what the word rain stands for? Kilia. The mind and the interior self, the seat of authority. See, so if we allow God to try the reins, then we're on a free ride. You understand? But it's very difficult to do that. Why? Because the human nature wants to be in charge, doesn't it? I want to drive. Don't you want to drive? You want to sit in the back seat? Who wants to sit in the back seat? That's not the way we're wired. But how did Jesus do what he did? He allowed the Father to completely hold the reins every moment of his life. Even though he was very God and at any moment he could do anything. He allowed every word that he spoke, every deed that he did, came from the Father. Amen. He's asking us to have that same kind of victory. Amen. And God would not ask us to do something that couldn't be done. Right. Turn to I, um, Psalm 73. I was going to get into Isaiah, but I decided not to. Next quarter. Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, and my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. My flesh and my heart faileth, 
but my God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that are go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. 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 There is a struggle there, isn't there? There's a big struggle. Brothers and sisters, we need to know this struggle. We need to embrace it and allow the Lord to have his place in our hearts. This battle is constant and it's, it's fierce. And the devil has many tricks in his bag to get us. But we can be victorious, victorious like Jesus. If this thing is going to end and it's going to wrap up, it has to be done. Where else is it going to be done if it's not going to be done here? This is the church that he has called out, brothers and sisters. We are his people. The issue is not concerned with getting a people ready for death, but for translation. Good. Translation. That's a big, big difference. It's a whole new idea and understanding. This is character development. As Jesus knew it. Total dependence upon God. Amen. Total dependence. Yes. Let us turn our Bibles to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8. I want to tell you a little story. Uh, did I say Hebrews chapter 8? Just start at 1 as we start. Start at 1. Um, I, uh, I've been struggling with quite a bit of things. And um, like I said, I, I see my father fail. It's very hard for me. And um, like I say, I just. I, I fight with God. I really do. I argue with Him. <laughs> Sometimes I think I know something and I don't know anything. You know, but God is so gracious to me. Amen. I just... Amen. I was playing ball the other night and I bent this foot. You can ask my wife if she saw it. I mean, that thing went all the way back there. I mean, it was bad. Anyways, um, <laughs> a guy... An hour before I did that, gave me this. And he said, watch it. He says, I made this for you. He made this for me. All right? He says, but it's got a lot of pricks on it. It'll prick you. And he gave it to me. That's exactly what he said. One hour before I did this. If that isn't God slapping me right in the face and giving me a big old sloppy kiss, I don't know what it is. Amen. God is so good all the time. He never fails. I don't know why he puts up with me. I really don't. But I am very blessed. Let us begin as Christ as high priest of the heavenly sanctuary in Hebrews chapter 8. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the song. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched, and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice whereof it is of necessity that this man has something also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was astonished of God, admonished of God, when he was about to make the tabernacle for See, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. 
there is a sanctuary in heaven, brothers and sisters. Amen. And there's a whole world out there that don't know anything about it. But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to make this really more well than fruit. But this is deep stuff. The Lord, as we know him now, is the mediator. He is in heaven working as our high priest. But there's going to come a day where there won't be a mediator. Amen. Man will need to stand upon his, his own. And no matter what anybody will tell you, that means you will be like Jesus. We must be sinless. We won't know that we're sinless, but we will be with Christ. It has to be. For God to be vindicated and his people to be vindicated, this must happen. And it will happen. He has promised us it will happen. Amen. For the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they will be to me a people. Do you see the impression that God is wanting to put upon our minds? He is wanting to put the stamp of his own impression upon us. And if we allow him to have the reins, the seat, and the authority of our minds, we will have complete and utter victory. It is like the yoke that we fight so hard because we don't want it put on. The moment that we allow, allow it to be set there, we realize at that very moment, that's all we ever really wanted was that yoke. Jesus is carrying the yoke. He's been carrying the yoke. All he's asking us to do is to team up with him. You know, when you got two oxen pulling the cart, there's always a lead. He's the lead. He wants to allow us the opportunity, may I say it, to dance with Jesus. Is that too much of a word? Is that struggle? Do people struggle with that? You know, you think about it. Ah, I'm not going to go there. And they shall not teach, in verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sin and their iniquities will I remember no more. Amen. Mm. Mm. All the Lord is good. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Are we going to allow it to vanish away and grab on to this new covenant thinking? The new covenant thinking, what is it? Man shall be reconciled to God. That's where it is, brothers and sisters. God has reconciled himself to us. We, as Seventh-day Adventists, need to show this demonstration to the world of man being reconciled to God. Amen. The new covenant. 
Turn your Bibles to uh, Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9. I'm going to begin at verse 15. I, you know, I'm, I'm not breaking down the scriptures so much because I think this really speaks for itself. So I'm just kind of reading through. Okay? I know you're all intelligent people. And if you allow the word to get into your mind, it's going to change you. I'm going to begin in verse 15, chapter 9. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Whew. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. What is that saying to us? Jesus' will and testament was ratified at his death. It is unchangeable, brother there, and sister. There is not a lawyer alive that can misconstrue this. It cannot be changed. <coughs> Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission In verse 23 it says, It was therefore necessary that the patterns of the things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others, for then he must have often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world has appeared to what? Put away sin. Is that not what Jesus is trying to do at this moment? To put away sin. By how? Sacrifice. By the sacrifice of himself. Is he not asking us to make this same sacrifice of ourselves? Not in the way that he did. Because, wow, could we give such a gift? No way. Jesus has given everything that we might have life. Amen. And have it abundant. But he must hold the reins. And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto you. Salvation. Amen? Amen? Amen, brothers and sisters. That is beautiful. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Anybody else have a heading there? 
Pardon me? Assurance of the resurrection. Assurance of the resurrection. Hope okay. of immortal glory. Pardon me? Hope of immortal glory. Hope of immortal glory. All right. Faith guides our life. Faith guides our life. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's, let us begin in 5 1. For we know that in our earthly house of this tabernacle were designed.